There's a young girl that I'm coaching in business and I say to everyone around her that's a little older and, and trying to coach her, let her feel the pain, all right? Because I tell you what, pain sharpens you, right? So with your experience in the past with working with Video Easy and Boxer, what, how much of that did you actually bring to what you're currently doing? Because it would have been a ton of things you've learned. The customer for, service piece is is gold the scale piece the, the scale many, and the scale piece and yeah scale. definitely well both um we're, we're we're trying to do this there's no vc money there's, there's no funding we're, we're trying to build this out of cash flow because mm -hmm. i think the business is strong enough to do that and you're going to go i That's actually madness. I actually no no i actually <laughs> love good old-fashioned stories yep. like that people raising money raising money raising money don't mm. understand the value of that capital yeah i'm a big fan in old-fashioned businesses cash flow that understand what is generated I think the uh, thought process is a lot more strategic. It's a lot more important you've got skin in the game personally. Exactly. Now, not a lot of people understand that, and I think yeah. it's more of an, and I, I'm in the same boat, an older mentality, I think, an old-fashioned business. Yeah. I'm surprised with, with Nick, a lot of people, venture capital, bring in more money, bring in more, bring no. more money. We, we could go to market with our idea and raise lots of, lots of dollars. I don't even want to think about it, right? But that's, that's, to me, that's not satisfying. Um, let's build it one one brick at a time. Do you think you can scale it quicker? Oh, I, I, absolutely. We could, we could but absolutely. But you'd lose, you'd dilute what you're trying to achieve. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, um, so we, my business partner and I, his his a lesson. All right, um, we we were in our thirties, um, full of ourselves, like Nick. No one will outwork me. Okay, <laughs> cool. I had the same. I had the exact same attitude. We spent two years building 20, 20 odd stores. Which is incredible, by the way. Mm. Yep. Incredible. You know what we forgot? The people. You, mean, right. you mean your team? Is that what yeah, yeah. Team? Every store needed 10 or 12 employees. You need to train them. Which is you 200. Know. So you grew too fast. The infrastructure couldn't keep up with the demand of training your team? Correct. Yeah. Like, uh, so... Sounds um, two easy years. to know after in hindsight. Hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. Yeah, exactly. Well, you, you're so focused on um, you have one mission. I got to build stores. All right, that's you don't know what you don't that's know. A you don't know what you don't know. Don't know what you don't know. So then, then we spent t two years and and probably uh, not a shameful time, but a real learning curve, where I had to go and fire good people because not a lack of their ability, a lack of my initial forethought and in in you know the Richard Branson. High for attitude, train for skill. The yeah. train for skill piece was look, horribly lacking. I do, and that's a, I actually um I, I was fortunate enough to be invited to his island and spent five days with him. Had lunch. I'm surprised with him. you're still alive. No. <laughs> I've heard no, stories. No, 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 it was actually I was on Nicker Island. I played I snooker know. with him on the top of. I've got a couple of photos I'll show him when we go at the back there. Oh, so dude, how many to, photos do you have? You'll see that. I'll show you the <laughs> Ronnie like, ones, I the new like ones, it. and the Branson ones on top of Nicker okay. Island. There you go. And I had a breakfast with him. I had a chat with him, and I said to him, "I'm going to ask you something, Richard." He goes, "What is it, Sir Richard Branson?" Of Sir course. Richard. Yes. <laughs> how do you find people that have the exact mindset? And when I was on his inter when I was on his yeah, island, okay. I was interviewing all these people, and I was asking him, "What's it like to work here?" And they all had almost the same things I was saying. His energy attracted similar people. And he's a people person. You can yeah, see yeah, it through yeah. and through. But when you actually meet someone, mm. my mindset's always, is he actually what you think you'll be? And it was exactly what I thought I'd be. Oh. He was driving up in a buggy, saying hello to everyone as he was going up. Super nice. And he's obviously dyslexic and got ADHD as well. So as mm. we're talking, having <laughs> breakfast, he looks around. And he comes off because he saw one of his uh, pink pelicans. And he goes, I'm going to go save it. It's halfway through our lunch, uh, breakfast. Sorry, he left. <laughs> and I thought, is exactly what I thought it would be. He's nice involved. as pie. Yeah. So, next day I saw him. I go, can you have a couple of shots of snook with me? And he goes, no problem. Signs a book for me. He was exactly what I thought. He's yeah. a human but he was man, actually, he? you could tell the care he had for everyone. Driving past, he knew everyone's name. 200 people worked on the other at any given time. And I saw that and I remember that. I took a lot away from meeting him. And it was obviously an honor to meet such a good it's really funny on the mm. on the drive here today you know i said to nick um i said nick you, you're really generous and and i i with with our people and i applaud that and i hope i hope you can maintain that in perpetuity right for the rest of your life as you get bigger and and harder, harder you get harder it gets harder it gets harder so that that's a great great skill nick yeah uh, the thing that it, it really attracts me to these to to this person and, and this generation is I feel they have much more empathy for each other. Mm. You know, it's like they're, Why do they're, you think that is? I, I, I don't, Chris. I, I wonder if it's just me. If it was me, I, I, 
uh, you know, our, our wolf of Wall Street mentality, win at all costs, mm. you know, that was drummed into us. To be successful, you've got to win at all costs. Mm. All right, take no prisoners. I mean, they're not their sayings, they're our sayings. But look at the New you Age know? leader, though. That, that I, I, what I like to think is I always think fusion's always the best way. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you can take that mentality mm -hmm. and understand, you look at whether it be Richard Branson, Gary Vee, they lead with kindness. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean you, don't, you, you can do it in a kind way and win, but you put that tenacity in winning, being kind, or treating your team well. Mm -hmm. So for me, I thought the answer for me personally is fusion. How do I take that tenacity? Because mm -hmm. for me, the old fashioned crazy mentality yeah, yeah. of I'm either dead on doing this, which is kind of the, the cloth that I've been cut from, but I want to do it in a manner that when people talk about Bransons of the world or that, they're in a kind manner. And I'd like to think my team would, would say similar things because for me, that's the most important thing. Because okay. if yeah. you look after that, the rest will work. Yeah. Yeah. And I think always, always the best is a fusion of both. See, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I love that because I think my generation wasn't wired that way. Uh, my generation was the, um, you know, look after your business and everything else looks after itself. It wasn't wasn't necessarily a focus. Uh, the amount of times uh, uh, that I rolled out um, my my cowardly line that I rolled out when I needed to, it was for the good of the business. Oh, look, I look. I'm not going to sit here and say everyone's. You, sometimes you've got to make decisions that you're not 100% proud of. You learn from mm -hmm. as you grow, mm -hmm. and it, it takes a it takes a real person to admit when they make mistakes. And I think any CEO makes a ton of them. Oh, you have but to. It's how you learn from. Because you got lots of decisions. It's how to you make. respond. Yeah, yeah. It's how you handle your mistakes and it's your team. Is how do you handle yourself? 100%. Yeah. I don't think anyone can say otherwise. But I think overall, if you're coming from a good place, it's going to sh show most of the times, which is important. So we're back, we're back uh, with you, Nick. So you mm -hmm. started the business, it's growing exponentially. You bring on uh, a CFO who has an, a crazy amount of experience to yep. put this together. Yep. Where's the future for the business? Where's this uh, relationship partnership, going? this relationship going? Where's the business heading? Um, well, so in the last 18 months, we've um, built three factories um, and uh, we've signed almost- we're, We've gone from zero orders to uh, a month to 32,000. Yeah, fantastic. In sixteen months, yeah, uh, Ozpost's one of their fastest growing businesses. I read that, and that's exceptional. We yeah. are, we are, we are almost at enterprise level on their, um, on their, on their freight business. I mean, that's just. What's the goal? The World domination. <laughs> no, <yeah>. um, <laughs> firstly, um, yeah, no, every state in Australia, then uh, New Zealand. We're getting begged to go to America. Um, we're mostly getting begged to go to um, Sydney. Sydney. <laughs> Sydney's unbelievable. Like we, every single like photo we upload, they're, they're begging us to come up. We get inboxes all the time of people just asking us to move into state or overseas. So I think that's the next step. Um, and currently, like I've, my lifestyle at the moment is fit for that. Um, I've got a partner. She's younger, and she's happy for me to really you know chase my dreams, which I'm I'm. I'm just getting started, but I'm keen and I couldn't really do it without Ed. He's really helped me along this journey. Well, listen, um, I've learned one thing in 17 years and it's uh, it's who you surround yourself, having the right team, yeah, having yeah, experience absolutely. or having a good... CFO is one of the most important part in any role. Correct. And having good people around you if you want to scale, yep. you care about the business and the mission. If I've learned one thing in business mm -hmm. and if I'm and I'm learning every day, I'm still at, at the entry level from what I, where I want to go. It's, it took me 17 years to build a great team to really start to build impact. Correct. To what we can do. Correct. That's the most important by far. That's what I'm learning every day. Yeah. Um, the, the biggest change I've noticed, um, I, um, uh, about six months in, I said, hey, guys, uh, they were, um, uh, one thing that the, the younger generation, they seem to find outsource centers for everything. I said, we need a, we need a bookkeeper. If you, can't, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it, right? Mm -hmm. Can't measure it, can't improve it, can't up time. You can't manage it. Correct. Yeah, yeah, you can't. So we, we brought in a, a, a gentleman, a Tommy, um, who is a savant with numbers. I mean, I've had data analysts, I've had accountants. I've got a Tommy who's a savant in my numbers too. He's my financial <laughs> controller. There you go. So now, um, uh, Noah, who is a creative, the other day, jokingly or seriously said, oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here because finance is now my my number one yeah. uh, wish, you know. Just just to put that in perspective, Chris, we we literally burnt one hundred and sixty thousand dollars before Ed was here in freight. I literally because I was underquoting, 
$160,000 and we're still able to get to this growth yeah. with me burning money like that. And you're going to learn and you're going to get a lot better as a result of it. So that's correct. A thing. They're and already still, better. You're we're, still here, you're still punching. Yeah, correct. Which is remarkable. Correct. Um, and I'd like to, Nick, I know you don't go on these a lot, so thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me, he's been He's been anxious all day. It's so a half an hour. You've, you've both courageous. done incredible. It's been an honour to have you. I am going to ask you guys. Yep. We're going to have to do a part two because this has okay. gone so well for me. If you guys have enjoyed I'm going to get you back. Definitely. Now, um, Hang on. Uh, we were talking about a rider in the car. A rider? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bar um, me for him. Uh, yeah. now, there, for me. There, was, there was actually a ton of questions. I didn't even get to the sheet because this conversation no, I can talk so under well. concrete. That's why I bought it. And we've got so many things in common. But I'm going to ask you guys my quick fire questions. I'm yep. going to go fire. one at a time. Yep. Are you ready? Okay. Now, before I do that, just very, very quickly, giving back to the community is really important to both of you. Definitely. Tell me a little bit about that quickly because I love philanthropy. We care is one of our values. I do a lot yep. for the Vinny CEO sleep out and I think that is a very important part of being a good business owner. Why yep. is it important to you? Uh, why is it important to me or why do I do it at the moment? Well, Give me both answers. It, I, I did it with this business um, for me personally because I was just shocked at the amount of um, rubbish and waste that were coming out of 3PLs um, when I went to see them. So that's why I wanted to you know, flip it on its head, only use compostable, only use recyclable and do, and do my impact. We've just invested in a $10,000 machine that will create um, eco-friendly uh, eco bubble wrap. Well, and recycle cardboard. And, re and recycle cardboard, yeah. yeah. Um, so, impact company, that's incredible. Um, how I give back. Um, uh, my, mine's probably a little bit selfish. Um, I spend time with these young kids and, yeah. try, to, and try to teach them to so be- So paying it forward. Uh, try, trying to teach them to be good humans. Tell yeah. them that a, a job's just a job, that, that, that they need to um, act with dignity and courtesy and manners and respect. And, and respect. And respect's the way you And I and I try to empower them. T today, I, I, I was privileged enough to spend some time with three very career-oriented girls. And, and I, I told them they, they need to reflect, they need to be considered, they need to control their environment. And I gave them some tips on how to do it. And my, my reward will see them be leaders in in the country that I love, you know, that's, yeah, that's a, my reward. So. A great leader builds a leader, so you're paying it forward. Mm -hmm. Now, um, and I really want to ask a couple of these because of your experience. How long have you been an entrepreneur for? Oh, uh, 50 years. <laughs> What's the greatest adversity you've faced and how did you overcome it? Um, uh, there's, there's, um, I, I roll this story out all the time. The two hardest things in business are growing yeah. and decline. Um, I, I watch the video industry disappear um, and people go, oh, streaming was always going to run over you. It wasn't that. Um, Julia Gillard brought in penalty rates. You know, our easy industry. Easy to say after it's all happened in hindsight, people <sighs> can say all that. It's very easy to say what would have happened, should have happened when you've already seen it play out. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so. oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, but, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's an expert of after course. the yeah, event. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Tell me what's happened. Thanks. We always knew yeah, there exactly. was a sunset clause, exactly. and, and it's like anything, you know, it was considered. The thing that, that killed the video industry was COVID. Hollywood stopped making movies. Really simple. Um, mm. I had to I had to sit with people that I'd employed for generations, and and tell them that um, I, I can't afford to keep you on tomorrow, um, pay them their redundancy check for twenty years. But it's like second family. It's, it's the sacking's a hard the word. It's the only part in the only part of my work that I don't like yeah. is having that conversation with someone. That's and it mean. never gets easier. If um, you're caring and pathetic, that's a good thing. And and you and you'd go in there and you'd uh, think this person's going to react like this, and you'd think some people would, would take it easily and they break down in tears, mm. and you think some people are going to be shattered and they they look at you and they, they thank you for their time and they do it with they dignity. Understand. Yeah, yeah. But you don't know what people are going through, but it's always a tough thing. Yeah. If you could give one piece of advice, uh, Nick, to your younger self, what would it be? Well, actually, nothing. I've got to where I wanted to be. I, if what I would had, you do differently? Would you do what would I do, exactly the same? I probably would. I, have, I cannot think of a moment where I've regretted what I've done, either good, bad or ugly. I c cannot think of something that I've regretted. Surely you would have been on this podcast sooner. I would have done that, definitely. You if go. you invite me back again, I'll be you here. <laughs> now, um, what's the most valuable piece of advice that you've ever received? Um... One year in the life of a tiger is better than 100 years in the life of a donkey. So basically, go for it. Go for Live it. Live every... To be, the be courageous. Answer to no one. I love it. I love it. Um, what's, what's something no one knows about you, Nick? I love UFOs. 
Yeah. Is that weird? <laughs> I don't know if it's weird. I don't know how many. I've never seen any I, yet that I know I, of. I love watching about reverse engineering. I love Bob Lazar. So if any, if you know any of these people. Bob Lazar. <laughs> Bob Lazar. <laughs> um, what's, uh, what do you feel the secret to a good life is, Ed? Um, pay attention to people around you. Treat, treat, them, treat them with respect, you know. Um, and, and I, I Chris, I've been battered um being a franchise or we had 800 franchisees it's a com competitive industry right uh, when everything's rolling really well everyone wants to know you everyone mm. just for and everybody loves you and when things aren't going well um you're the problem it's it's never it's never um I, but they still did they still need people still need to be understood they need to be respected and like i said i i said to the girls today as i was giving them a lesson about life i, I look at myself in the mirror every day and I ask myself, um, have I done the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? Because right? I, I don't really care about other people's opinions, Chris, because if I did, I wouldn't have done anything. Mm, you know, exactly. someone told me other people's opinions over you, none of your business. Mm. Okay. Yeah. George Ross said that actually. Okay. Was, um, was uh, John Trump's right hand man for 47 years. Other people's opinions of you is none of your business. And yeah, I exactly. always thought that was a really it's great. That's a really rare insight. Yeah. And you yeah. brought it up a few times with respect. I think that's the most important thing. It's not about not making mistakes. It's not about being oh, wrong because no. we're going to do it. It's about how you respect the other person. It's how you acknowledge it. And it's how you point in the mirror as being reflective, which is so important when it comes to business. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, um, if, if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying stuff. Or you're not growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you. you, you, you um, there's, a, there's a young girl that I'm coaching in business and, and I say to everyone around her that's a little older and, and trying to coach her, let her feel the pain, all right? Because I tell you grow. what, pain sharpens you, right? It also if shows you how you respond. Is it that fight or flight? Are you going to go yeah, down? Are you yeah, going yeah. to come back? Are you going to bite your teeth? Are you going to show yeah. up tomorrow? I think that's the biggest lesson I, in business, I, isn't um, it? I, I try to, one, one of the things that I try to teach in leadership, um, you know you're a leader when you, when you present when an issue or a problem presents and you step forward with that thought. Yeah. You show up. Yeah. You, you show up, yeah, but you're exactly. the first to step forward, mm. all right? You're the first and it's a reflex, not a, not a consider. I'm not thinking about it. It's, this it's, is what it's I do, this nature. is who I am. Yeah, yeah. it's you second know, nature. I always say that too and I, I have that conversation with COVID. I said, now I want to see who shows up. I'm yeah. putting you on notice, guys. I'm putting myself on notice. Let's see what we've got. Everyone can be rosy when things are going good. Yeah, right? When yeah. things are getting tough, when, the when you judge hits, a substance of a man respond? or woman. Ex yeah. Exactly. And you, you said something. And I always say to, as, as I'm getting older, I say I don't, I don't even I really, I don't really listen. <laughs> I don't really listen what people say. I go, I judge what they do. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. All I look at is people's Talks actions. Talks cheap, right? Are they aligned with what they're saying? Because a lot of people say a lot of things, and I'm seeing more become a lot more quiet and I'm trying to listen more because people say things, but your That's actions it. aren't aligned. Say in business, I'm learning mm -hmm. that as well. I do want to ask you this, Ed. Sure. What, what, what advice would you give your younger self? Um, a, a business is not a, a business. Could be business, could be personal. I don't mind. I yeah, just yeah, want to yeah. I, a business one. You're a well-versed man it, in it, both. It doesn't have to be a combat sport. All right. It, it's not win at all costs. What does costs. that mean? It's not win at all costs. So just proceed, um, so just get better? So one of the things... Is that um, what you're trying to say? The art of doing a deal is t is for both parties to think they've won. Win-win. Win-win. Ah, I hate that saying because it's not win-win. It's... it's um, um, once you burn a bridge, you never go back, all right? Um, one, one of the sayings I'd had was, um, be hard enough that I can still do business with you. All right? And I, it's, it's, it's weird, but, um, you know, don't, don't burn bridges. Um, like I said, my, my generation was win at all costs. And I did a lot of work in America and I felt, uh, working with Americans, and I know I'm generalising, but it felt really combative. Australia's, Australians, Australian business people, are more collaborative, all right? I'm equally as happy for you to be successful working with me because you'll make me successful. I love hearing that and I hear you talk about, and it's good to hear because you don't hear a lot of people, you know that tall poppy syndrome. For me, it was about... I rebuilt this business when I started. When you said your parents didn't have a suitcase, I built this. People go, I started my business from zero. You started negative 348. I said, I wish I had zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what yeah. I did build it on was hard work, foundation, Turn integrity. So, that, so in two th I started in 2000, and on the 21st of March, 2005. In 2008, I scaled my business. Mm -hmm. Got a $250,000 check from a developer. 
on the first meeting, gave me 125, 125 volume. I go, gee, that was easy, but he vetted me. Mm. He knew what I did in my previous jobs. Mm. He knew I was a man of my word. He knew I had integrity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I thought, gee, that was easy, I gave him a business proposal on one page, which I still haven't read. There were spelling mistakes, there was this, but he actually backed me. He backed my vision and work ethic. And looking back, I always thank this man. I actually visited him 10 years after, because I never worked with him after two years he worked with me. Eight years I didn't. Kept his details, I flew up and said, thank you. I read your, your facts you gave me every day. 3.23 on the 10th of the 9th, 2008, is when he agreed to help me and give me that money on that one page where facts came through. Mm. Read it every day, it's on my computer, and I flew back two weeks after the 10-year anniversary to say thank you for helping me, this is what I've done, and I appreciate your help. My, my business partner, Paul Uniak, and I, um, we, we formulated a partnership to, to grow these stores that I talked about. In, um, it was about 2002. We, we drafted up a 10-page partnership agreement. Haven't signed it yet. That's for the, the good old respect, fashion respect. respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just respect, fact, exactly Just that right. you, you put... Exactly. My, my words, my bond. If, if, if I, um, I... I said to my wife this morning, right, once we agree and we, we do a deal, the, um, the contractual stuff's just ceremony, right? Because if my words... Um, if my word's not worth 10 or 20 or 50 or, or a million bucks, my word's worth nothing. Of course. All right, so, um, and it, it, this, this, I don't know if I was brainwashed by my, my dad and my granddad about respect, respecting people. Uh, you know, uh, a good person's a good person. Even today we interviewed a young girl and I said, Nick, I've read her resume. Her, her skills are miles uh, beyond what we need. Or we're going down the stairs to see if she's a good person. A good, good person. person. Exactly. That's it. You're That's all I want. Attitude, because everything else yeah, is yeah. trainable. Anything Real, else? Yeah. And she was. So I'm gonna start with you. What's the first thing you think of when you wake up, Nick? Um, the first thing I think of is breakfast. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a lie. I no, don't. That I is don't absolutely the no, truth. No, no, no. I don't actually eat Coffee. breakfast. Off camera, I heard you no. like food. I love food, food. too. I, so do, can... I do love food, but the first thing I think of is my customers because when I turn on my phone, I've got about 180 WhatsApps to look through. I love WhatsApp. Yeah, sorry. Um, Ed. Um, first thing I think of is, um, uh, um, I, I mentioned before that my generation has let themselves go. What am I going to do today? What exercise? So if, if my body and my mind are failing, I'm useless. I'm a waste of time. So the first, my first thought is... Clarity. Yeah. Keep a clear mind. Um, how do you start your day? How do I start my day? Um, well, it starts at about 6.30 and I go straight into the warehouse and make sure everything's operating properly. To head the office. Straight yeah. to the office. Up at um, 4.35 a.m., been doing that forever. That's actually a sleep in. Um, uh, plan my day, yep. go to the gym, get to work. That's fantastic. What's your favorite thing to cook? Steak. Pasta. Love them both. It's the worst job you've ever had. Worst job? Yep. Um, I'd like to say carpentry, but uh, I, could, I learned so much from, um, learned so much about hard work. I don't think I could say that, but I, I would have to say, Labouring or carpentry was the worst besides the lessons that it taught me. Uh, Ed? I don't reckon I've had a worse job because um, I've taught myself that whatever I'm doing, um, I control my environment, so I've always had fun. But the most meaningless job, I worked on the line at the Kraft Cheese Factory. Um, <laughs> what haven't you done? <laughs> what haven't you done, mate? <laughs> uh, look, if I, I, I watched oh this, was at a peach shop, I was cleaning you toilets at a, at a nightclub, I was a busboy. <laughs> you got at, at the, I oh. did all that, so... Good fun. And yeah. Happy days. <laughs> What's your biggest pet peeve? Pet peeve? Um, I, th I think um, just not people not having respect. I think that's just kind of died in this... Isn't that funny? Because that's my pet peeve is bullies. <laughs> Hate it with a passion. And when in the last hundred years did manners stop being a thing? Right? Exactly. It's crazy. Did, what we what that, does man. it matter if you're drinking a latte or a cappuccino? Suck it up, princess. Just drink it. Move That's on. the spirit. <laughs> yeah. um, what's the best gift you've ever received? The gift uh, was actually my niece. Um, mm. That was about last week. Um, her name Beautiful. is Kiara. And, Beautiful. you know, I haven't felt love like that ever, ever. So I'm really happy and that's my gift. Well, that's Favorite a great gift. answer, and one day I hope you're going to experience that for yourself. Thank I've you. I've got four, so be careful what you wish for. <laughs> uh, um, same yeah, 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 time with time with my kids. The fact that they, the the fact that they still think I'm interesting, even uh, after I rolled out the same story for a million times, I still <laughs> I, I still respect their dad enough to laugh. <laughs> that's the spirit. That's love and respect. Yeah. And hopefully you're funny as well. You are quite funny. <laughs> Name one book that positive influences. It's 48 Laws of Power, without a doubt. If you haven't read that, you're, you're losing. 
Chris, um, uh, year nine was the best three years of my life. Um, <laughs> I don't reckon I've read a book since. <laughs> um, do you have any tats? I'm covered. Covered? Covered, head to toe. Two chicken. <laughs> um, uh, in, in my age, if, if you had tats, you, you were out of prison. <laughs> uh, it's funny how it's no, it's seriously. Now it's cool. Man. Um, one of the kids, one of the kids that played footy with us had tats on his cars. We we're all scared of him. We wouldn't turn out on the. My brother's kid. from front, really? all the back, front yeah. and back. That's art today. Now you, I, he's, I always run out. I say I always joke. If I run out of pictures, I'm going to hang you on the wall. Um, <laughs> what's your favourite movie of all time? Um, oh, that's a great. Same question. questions. You've got yeah, a bit yeah. of time to think, Ed. Um, uh, favourite movie of all time? Maybe movie or TV show. Give me either. Um, Peaky Blinders, the rise from the streets to, politi- to, be- to getting in politics. It's not Seinfeld? Not Seinfeld. I, I watch it every day, but no. Okay. Just to, that's, well, that's not noise. a movie. Oh, it's it's, it's the best show of all time. <laughs> um, so on the back of our business cards, the video is in Blockbuster. We used yeah. to put our top five movies, all right, because uh, it was a great mo- movie. A movie was once a great time the, the, the biggest so contraband what was, on the What planet. was yours? Um, um, uh, it was um, Braveheart. Could ask a better question Bra- Braveheart, for you, yeah. 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 Gladiator. Just one? Yeah. <laughs> now right, give me the top five. Yeah, you you right, got to right, give me the top five. <laughs> this is an honour to have him in his seat. So I gotta <laughs> give Superman? Brave, yeah. Because I remember walking, yeah. running out of Burke Street. Yeah. Because um, uh, here you go. When I, was, when I was 15, the brothers at the Morris Brothers College used to run movies, right? So it was Bruce Lee and, and stuff that no one would watch. But it was, uh, I mean, I, I watched Amitable Horror as a 16-year-old and never watched another horror movie again. I um, like that with Nine Men Elm Street. Uh, Night at the Roxbury. Yeah, great movie, yeah. Like the funniest movie yeah. ever. And as, what's that for? What have I got? What was that for? One more. You got one more. A Notebook. <laughs> that, is a, that is a good movie. Oh. I don't know whether it fits yeah. in with it's Gladiator. A soft, it's, it's a bit soft. It's a bit different. Right, right. Yeah. Big contrast there, Red Bull. Let it go. Um, when you're not working, how do you spend your time? Um, probably uh, <laughs> cooking. Cooking. I do a lot of cooking. Um, I just bought a spit. I made two spits on the weekend. What is it with wogs and spits? I'm sorry, mate. I'm a wog. Look at that. You have to. It's, it's, it's respect. <laughs> you got to. Respect. Same uh, question, Ed. Um, uh, gym and family. Golf. And Come golf. on, mate. All right, your now. Your wife talks to me. This is, what's, what's your uh, your go-to stress mechanism? You're super stressed. What's your go-to Sauna. technique? Sauna. Yeah, definitely. Um, just time with myself. Time. Now, final question from one to ten. Gentlemen, how much have you enjoyed the podcast? Ten. There you go. So we're going to get you guys back? Yep. No, been definitely. An absolute... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm so half of you right back. Right first. <laughs> it's been I'm a... trying to teach you the negotiation. It's That's been an absolute Lord. pleasure having you both. I've learned a lot. I mean, we could talk for absolute yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. Nick, thank so, you very much. You're thank a you natural. for having me. Ed, thank it's you. been a pleasure and a privilege. I can't wait to it see you It did well for someone who was... Um, yeah, am I allowed to say shit's He's trying to close the podcast again. You both did incredible and great dynamic. I hope the business goes to even bigger heights. I'm sure we'll leave you two behind it. Thank you. I look forward to it. Hopefully we can update you. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you. All right. Now now that we're off, um, I guess uh, it's probably important to note the Ronnie and the Branson stories and that, (laughs) and I made all up. (laughs) What? What? Yeah, I never met him. (laughs) <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. Come on. I can't, I can't help myself. I'm like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs>